For more stock news updates, remember to press the like button and subscribe. With that being said, let's get straight into the video. In the June ended quarter, renowned hedge fund manager Israel Englander made a notable shift in his investment portfolio by selling more than 7 million shares of Palantir Technologies, one of the most talked about artificial intelligence stocks. This move caught the attention of investors because Palantir has consistently been a favorite stock in the AI space. Interestingly, while reducing his stake in Palantir, Englander redirected his focus toward one of the most widely recognized consumer brands in the world. This strategic decision reflected his deeper understanding of the market and insight into emerging trends. Last week, Wall Street entered into earnings season, kicking off a crucial period that will span approximately six weeks. During this time, most companies in the S&P 500 will release their financial results, shedding light on their operational performance over the recent quarter. These earnings reports provide valuable information about the health of individual companies and the broader U.S. economy. But but beyond these financial reports, there is another set of data that holds even greater significance for many investors, particularly those who follow institutional trading activity. There are two of those managing assets worth at least $100 million are required by the Securities and Exchange Commission to file Form 13F every quarter. This form gives the public an opportunity to look over the shoulders of the largest institutional money managers to see what stocks they have been buying or selling during the previous quarter. It's an invaluable tool for investors investors who want to track what top performing hedge funds are doing with their money. The filing deadline for the second quarter's trading activity was on August 14th, making it one of the most anticipated data releases of recent times. While Warren Buffett is perhaps the most famous asset manager, other billionaire investors have also earned a devoted following. Among them is Israel Englander, the founder of Millennium Management, a hedge fund that many consider to be one of the most successful in the industry. Englander's Millennium Management is a highly active hedge fund managing a vast array of positions that span across different sectors and industries. By the middle of 2024, the hedge fund had close to $216 billion in assets under management. One of the most eye-catching trades carried out by Englander and his team during the June ended quarter was the substantial reduction in their position in Palantir Technologies, a stock that has been a part of Millennium's portfolio since the company went public in September 2020. Palantir stock has been a favorite among investors due to its role in the rapidly evolving field of artificial intelligence. However, during the second quarter of 2024, Englander decided to sell 7,074,815 shares of Palantir, cutting the hedge fund's stake in the company by 59%. After the sale, Millennium was left with just under 5 million shares of Palantir. This move was surprising to some given Palantir's recent stock performance. By the second quarter, the stock had doubled in value, having traded in a relatively narrow range between $6 and $10 from May 2022 through April 2022. 2023. With such a dramatic rise, it's understandable that some investors might see an opportunity to take profits. Millennium Management typically holds its top 20 positions for an average of 11 quarters or less than three years, so profit-taking after such a large increase in Palantir's share price is a plausible reason for the sale. However, it is likely that Englander's decision to reduce his position in Palantir was driven by more than just profit-taking. In truth, Palantir's valuation has become quite a concern for many investors. The stock's forward price-to-earnings ratio had soared to almost 100, a figure that is considered unsustainable for most companies. Although Palantir provides critical services, such as its artificial intelligence-powered Gotham platform, which helps government agencies with mission planning, the company's high valuation was becoming difficult to justify. The Gotham platform has been a significant contributor to Palantir's success, especially with its ability to land long-term contracts with the U.S. government. However, the growth potential of this platform is limited. There are only so many government entities that can make use of Gotham's capabilities, and Palantir has explicitly stated that it will not offer its services to certain countries, such as China or Russia. As a result, Palantir will need to rely more heavily on its Foundry platform for long-term expansion. Foundry, which helps businesses analyze and interpret their data, holds promise but is still in its early stages, making it uncertain how much growth it can generate for the company in the near term. While Englander was offloading more than half of his Palantir shares, he was aggressively buying into a another company that has proven its resilience and appeal to consumers worldwide. Despite adding to over 2,000 existing positions during the June ended quarter, the most striking purchase Englander made for Millennium Management was shares of Coca-Cola. 
a well-established leader in the consumer staples sector. According to Millennium's Form 13F filing, the hedge fund purchased 5,444,678 shares of Coca-Cola during the quarter, bringing the total number of shares it owns in the company to over 7 million. This marked a 347% increase in its stake in Coca-Cola in just three months. The company's wide array of beverages, which includes its flagship Coca-Cola soft drink, are essential products that people consume every day, regardless of how the economy is doing. This stability is what makes consumer staple stocks such popular investments during times of uncertainty. However, Coca-Cola offers more than just stability. One of the reasons Coca-Cola stands out is its unmatched geographic reach. The company operates in every country around the world except for North Korea, Cuba, and Russia, giving it exposure to both developed markets, where where it generates steady cash flow, and emerging markets where it has the potential for strong organic growth. In fact, Coca-Cola has over 20 brands that each generate at least $1 billion in annual sales. This level of geographic and product diversity ensures that the company can continue growing in various economic conditions. Coca-Cola is also the world's most popular consumer brand, according to Kantar's Brand Footprint Report. In May, Kantar released its latest report marking the 12th consecutive year that Coca-Cola was named the top brand globally. The report showed that the number of households purchasing Coca-Cola products increased by 2.6% in 2023, with consumers choosing Coca-Cola's products nearly 8.3 billion times. This widespread brand recognition didn't happen overnight. Coca-Cola's marketing efforts have played a significant role in making making the brand a household name around the world. The company's long history, combined with its effective use of well-known brand ambassadors, has helped it connect with mature consumers. More recently, Coca-Cola's marketing team has been leveraging artificial intelligence and digital media channels to engage younger audiences, ensuring that the brand stays relevant across generations. Coca-Cola's attractiveness as an investment goes beyond its brand recognition and global reach. The company also has one of the most impressive capital return programs in the market. While Coca-Cola's board of directors occasionally authorizes share buybacks, the real highlight of its capital return strategy is its dividend. In February, Coca-Cola raised its annual dividend for the 62nd consecutive year, making it one of only a handful of companies that can claim the title of Dividend King. There are fewer than 10 public companies that have a longer streak of consecutive dividend increases, further solidifying Coca-Cola's status as a top choice for income-focused investors. The final piece of the puzzle for Englander's decision to increase Millennium's position in Coca-Cola was likely its valuation. During the second quarter, Coca-Cola's forward price-to-earnings ratio was in line with its five-year average, but its shares were trading at a discount compared to this average, making it an attractive buy for value-conscious investors. While Coca-Cola may not be a high-growth stock, its well-established competitive advantages, strong brand recognition, reliable dividend, and consistent cash flow make it a solid investment for patient, long-term shareholders. The company's ability to navigate both strong and weak economic environments with ease combined with its commitment to returning capital to shareholders has ensured that Coca-Cola remains a popular choice for institutional investors like Israel Englander. In conclusion, during the June-ended quarter, Israel Englander sold over 7 million shares of Palantir Technologies while significantly increasing his position in Coca-Cola. Palantir's high valuation and limited growth potential, particularly in its Gotham platform, likely played a role in the decision to reduce the stake. In contrast, Coca-Cola's consistent cash flow, global dominance, reliable dividend, and attractive valuation made it a more compelling investment. For more stock news updates, remember to press the like button and subscribe. With that being said, I will see you in the next video.